And I saw your kitty. Oh, good. You saw some cats. Okay. Go All on. right. Hi. My name is Harry Hogsett. I am a personal trainer and mobility specialist. Um, I have, some of you have met me before when I came out last year. Was it last year? Yeah, it was. It was this time last year. Uh, Tara asked me to do a gentle stretching mobility session with you guys that you could do from your office um, or from your home as you're all working at home, which I think is a good safe place for us to be right now. Um, one of the things that uh, if you don't have any of the things that I'm going to show you, you can always find some around your house. I know the last time I came to see you guys, I brought some, some rods like this. This is what I use for the longest time. This is one of my old broom mop poles. So if you've got a straight bar like this, um, it can be a very useful tool for opening up the chest and getting the shoulders warmed up and also warming up the back and stuff. So we're gonna start with this. I don't know if you notice, I've got bare feet. Uh, so that is something to think too. Uh, there's some benefit to be having no shoes on to grounding yourself to the earth. Um, when you're really stressed out, folks, one thing that was always encouraged to me was to take my shoes off and go walk outside in the ground and ground myself. So think about that sometimes. Taking your shoes off can be a benefit to us too. And as Tara well knows, there are times that when I train people that we do some exercises with our feet. I'm not gonna do that today because it takes a little bit longer, but there are some exercises that I have everybody do with their feet to keep their feet uh, happier because you know we're in shoes all day long. If you wear closed toes or uh, pointy shoes, your toes get jammed together. So keep working on those toes going apart. Uh, I learned as I aged that my feet started giving me trouble. So I am trying to undo that trouble, not undo it, but change it. All right, so if you have a pole, grab it. If not, don't worry about having anything. We're gonna start, I wanna also remind you that when you ground yourself and you stand, <clears throat> think about engaging your glutes and engaging the core so that you're not rocking back and forth when you do things like this. So you can take something like this and open up the chest now, notice that my hands are slider further down the pole to open up, to get around. If you cannot get all the way back, don't worry about it. Now, if you don't have a pole and you have a strap, just work on opening up. Think about opening up and squeezing back as you come back. Because the whole purpose of this is to try to open up that chest we all sit at these desks and we sit and we crunch our back and stuff and we get cranky backs, right? So this exercise can help us to open up our chest and stretch everything out there. So going straight back and forth is one, <clears throat> excuse me, one method. I usually do about 10 or 12 of these at a time. Then there's an exercise that you can call, that is called a halo where you take it up from one side and come around. So we're opening up a little bit differently here. We're going around in circles. <clears throat> if you don't have the pole, what I want you to do with this is to focus on one arm going into a circle at a time. So you might start with one side and then go around the other. You might notice that you have, if you have any difference between lifting one arm from the other. I have more impingement issues on my right side. So this side gets a little more difficult for me, but the more I do it, the more I can open up. Now, we've opened up that chest. We can take that pole. Now I know that if you don't have a pole on this, if you don't have a pole, I want you to just open up your arms and you're going to hinge. So <clears throat> now what we're going to do is we're going to take this pole and we're going to hinge a little bit, drive that butt back, come back up, try to warm up all this and stretch this out here, warm it up, come back. <clears throat> we're going to do about 10 or 12 of these, hinging forward, driving that back, Keep that core tight. 
my philosophy is to try to keep that core engaged always as you're standing, driving, Now, we've gotten warmed up with the pole. We'll put that down. Now, if anybody has a chair, whoops, if anybody has a chair around them and they've got room, even in a small office, you really only need a small amount of room. You can have a chair in front of you and you can use that chair to do a lot of mobility things. First thing we're gonna go, we're gonna, we're gonna add on to what we did with that hinge and now what I want to do is I want to use the chair. We're going to come down and use the chair as a, as a, as a, a surface that we can uh, use where we can stretch back, drop forward, and then drive back. But I also want to show you a really great exercise that that, that, that chair can be used for too. In this position, drop your hands. And I want you to scoop that belly and roll all the way up. Drop the shoulders down, reach the arms up. <clears throat> Gosh, I am congested this morning after we talked about sinus issues. Take a deep breath in, palms facing away. Take a deep breath in. And as you come down, I want you to round at the neck and round from the thoracic region and exhale and come down to the chair, place your hands on it and drive that butt back. You should really feel some stretching in that, uh, in those hamstrings, drive yourself forward, then drive back, then drop the hands and then scoop from the belly and come back up. We'll do three more or two more of these. Take a deep breath in, Exhale, curl from the thoracic. Don't worry about scoop that belly in. Drive it down. If you don't have a chair, just come down. If you have that chair, that gives you the ability to drive back and then come forward in to drive that. Open up that front, drop the hands, scoop back up. Reach up. One more, take a breath in, exhale. Exhale all that air out, drive the butt back, drop forward, back again, hands down, curl and come up. Always finish with that nice big air, exhale and coming up too. Now, there's another thing that I love to have people use this chair for. And that is when we sit for long periods of time, the psoas gets very tight. Starts here, wraps through and comes up. So if you find yourself when you're like, sometimes if you're cranky, when you get up, you feel your SI joint back here is not happy. A lot of times that can be because your psoas is getting tight because we've been sitting in a chair shortening this hip flexor all day long. So get up periodically and get onto your chair and do a plank and then bring one leg forward and sink into it. Come back up, other leg to the side of the chair and sink into it. If you have room in your office and you do not have a chair and you're okay with getting on the floor, you can do this on the floor in a plank position and come up this way. We're sinking into that hip flexor to make that, to give it some mobility. But I like using the chair because it gives people a better ability to drive in. Now, when you sink into this, I want you to sink from the hip. Sink, drive that hip home from the glutes, take that foot forward and drive into it from there. Alternate from side to side, take your time. Now, there is an added thing that we can do when we do this. As we come up with that leg, we can lift this arm and open up that chest, but don't worry about it so much. I, right now, I want folks to really think about, but if we open this up, you might feel a little bit more. 
It's just like a lever, lifting that elbow, coming up. <clears throat> I usually recommend eight to 10 of these. Focus on driving that hip, sinking into it, and opening that up. How's everybody doing? Are you feeling those hips opening? Awesome, yay. Liking the thumbs up. It's great. Love awesome. it. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> All right, so we've opened up those hips. I'm keeping an eye on the time with you guys. All right, we've opened up those hips. The other thing that I find when you're sitting for long periods of time, your IT band gets a little cranky. So one way to stretch that out is to, to put one leg behind the other. Now you can, it actually helps to have, I, I mean, I've got a piece of equipment in here that I can hang on or maybe even show you how you can use a doorway where you can, so I am, this is the hip that I wanna stretch. So I'm gonna get on my doorway, I'm gonna cross, I know this is hard to see, I'm gonna cross my leg. This is the hip that I'm trying to stretch. My left foot is behind it at an angle. And I am gonna, wait a minute, let me do it the other way. Right foot, left foot forward, right leg back. I am gonna stretch into that doorway this way. Driving my hips, the things that you will find is that you will get a stretch. You will get a stretch all the way up. Let me see if I can find this doorway. I know this is really hard for you guys to see. But if we can take a doorway, I know I'm far away from you. Well, let me do it this way. Probably didn't accept your video to be walking, did you? I use this doorway all the time for my TRX people. So Can you guys hear? Harriet, we lost you. I've got left arm up. Can you see that? Uh-oh. There you are. There you oh, are. Can you see me? Yeah. yeah no, all right. Sorry can. about that, you guys. All right. all right. So I'm in the doorway. I've got my left arm up. I changed the The intention is, is to get that hip exposed will help. Could you see that, you guys? So how when you stretch that hip, it's a little harder getting on the ground that can show you other ways, but I wanted to try to show you all things to do standing up. Um, now, the other thing with the chair is we've stretched that hip this way. Now, what are we gonna do about those hamstrings? You can use your chair to stretch your hamstrings. This part of the leg that gets so tight. We can also use the chair to stretch the hip quads and I'll show you that. So if we bring one foot up on the chair, doesn't have to be as high as this. It could be anything. Like just for example, I have a step here that's 12 inches. So something like that, you can go out in the hallway and find a step. Get your foot up, hinge back into it. What I want you to do is I want you to evert the foot. So I am taking the foot and everting it out. When we do that, as we hinge, you're gonna feel more along this line. If we invert it, you may feel more. If you're tighter, because there's four hamstrings, three main ones, rotating that foot a little bit will activate those hamstrings. So bring that foot up, whether you want to do it higher or lower is your choice. The main thing I want to remind you is don't round your back as you do this. Hinge back, keep your chest up, lift your rib cage, and hinge that way. 
If you hinge that way, you're going to activate your hamstrings. If you round, you're stretching your lumbar region. So the foot comes up. We can rotate in, evert the foot or invert the foot and play around with where you feel. Is anybody feeling anything different as they move that foot? I feel it differently. Yeah. Good. In, on the inner, inner side or the outer side, actually. Yes, exactly, Ann. That's exactly. We're getting those, those medial and those lateral hamstrings activated when we invert and evert that foot. So hamstrings get tight. Now, we can use the chair to try to help us to at least, and I know it's a lot harder to do the quads, so you could use the chair to get the foot up, but this one's a little harder because you really got to You've got, I almost have gotten to the point where I may use the chair to get my foot up and then try to grab my foot, except that, whoo, my hamstrings just went. I tend to use something to hold on to, like a doorway, and bring my quad up and stretch it. So I am here. You can see my knee is even with the other one. If I slightly go past that knee, squeeze that foot, you're going to feel more in that quad. Be very gentle on how you do this. You do not want to stretch that knee too much. Anybody feeling their quads? I'm feeling it. Yeah, good. So this will be a good thing to release those quads. We've worked at the psoas, the hip, the hamstrings, the quads. We get the legs a little happier. Now let's talk about a little bit more on the upper body. We don't want to forget. We've, we've opened up that chest. We've opened everything up here. One thing that I would like to talk, go over with you guys, because this is something that we all do. We don't know how to use our back properly. When we go to reach, we tend to want to reach from here. So if we learn how to reach from here, from the shoulder blade, and learn how to glide that, that's going to help us. So one of the things I wanted to share with you today is let's stand up, and I want you to learn how to reach your shoulders out without lifting from here. So as we reach out, we should feel a scapular glide. I don't know if you can see this here. My shoulder blade is gliding up and down in its pocket. The anterior serratus and the latissimus, all this tissue here is activated. So as I reach, that's where I'm reaching from. So because you all work at desks, you're all very busy all the day, I know the neck gets really, really angry. So learning how to use the body properly can alleviate some of that. So I just wanted to briefly touch on that. So now let's do a little stretching of the arms. So bringing that arm across, stretch into it. We're trying to get all of this here. We opened from the front. Now let's stretch the back. Get that across, come up. You can stretch the hamstring, I mean the, the hamstring, the tricep here along the back of the arm. And then something that everybody might get tired with is your wrists, working on the computer a lot. Don't forget to stretch your wrists. So you can open it up Stretch it out both ways. Go both ways because who gets sore forearms from working on the computer all the time? Yeah. That, that is something that we, you know, I worked on a computer for 16 years when I worked for the government and I ended up in physical therapy twice for thoracic outlet syndrome because my, I want to make sure everybody knows, don't let your shoulder be up when you're working on stuff. You've got to relax everything down. So let's go get that other side. Get that tricep. Ooh, get that forearm. I'm not sore today, so I wish I kind of wish I was. <laughs> so I'd know more. All right, now. Quickly, I know we only have about five minutes left. So, 
some dynamic exercises to get your blood flowing. You've been sitting in your office, you've been sitting for a long time. Some dynamic exercises will get the blood flowing and will help you wake up. So you can get up, take your chair, and start doing some leg swings. Or doorway, you can stand in the doorway. So I'm going to take opposite arm, opposite leg, kicking. Now, notice when I kick back, I'm trying to kick myself in the butt. That will open up your front. So if you kick 10 times, 10, 12 times, this will get that heart rate up, get some stuff warmed up, open up that arm. We've done some stuff to, to, to get stuff warmed up, opened up. Now we can dynamically push it even further. Switch sides. Try to kick yourself in the butt. Now, you can also use your pole to do that. You don't have a chair. You got a pole. You can use your pole, too, so keep that in mind. All right, so we've kicked those legs. Now let's do a lateral to open up the side. So stand and drive your arm and drive that hip out as you do this. Actually about 10 or 12 of these and then go to the other side. You may notice some difference from one side to the other. That tells us we know if every side stayed the same, I don't know, that would be boring, wouldn't it? Drive that hip out. All right, now you're gonna hug yourself. Hug, so as you hug, open up, palms up. Hug and switch the arms, which one's on top each time. So hug in. Again, open up the palms. All right. Woo. Finish up with a, that get everybody's heart rate up. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, that wakes everybody up. Uh, to get some blood flowing and stuff is a really good thing since you, when we've been sitting and focusing on things for so long. Yeah. Uh, I do it too. <clears throat> so try to think, oh, calves. Last thing, I did not want to forget your calves. All right, you guys. My recommendation is either to take a wall or like I'm on top of a table here and I'm going to take my leg back. I'm going to do this at a, woo, I'll do it on the door so you can see it. Yeah. All right. So coming up to the door. Sitting for long periods of time. Again, we're shortening everything. Uh, or actually, we're lengthening those. So we'll do both. So with the calves, I'm keeping the back foot flat and I'm driving into this. Now, something that I learned when I broke my foot is that a better way to stretch the calves is to activate that arch and lift that arch when you when you hinge into it keep that arch and then bend that knee too you're gonna you can sit back into it you're gonna get the lower part in the soleus it's a lot harder to keep that foot arch lifted when you bend that leg but practice it the more you do it the easier it will get so stretching into that calf on each side bending into that knee i have a harder time lifting my arch in that. <coughs> now, the front of the leg, the tibias get sore too. So another thing you can do to make those a little happier is when you're sitting at your desk and you know, or if you're sitting there on a Zoom meeting and you're paying attention, you can come up, you can sit in your chair, lift your leg and do some point and flex. Point and flex to keep this area of the body. Uh, it's interestingly enough, a little interesting side note. 
one of my clients who uh, does not have the use of one side of his body from a stroke, I have been having him point and flex on his good leg and he's walking better and he's getting a lot less problems with it. So doing that point and flex will really help to keep that, that tibia in the front of the shin in a better shape. Oh, I'm trying to, Tara, can you think of anything I missed? Anybody want to do anything? I think I... I think that's perfect. Those are really yeah, that was great. exercises that people can do in their office that are easy. And um, yeah, so I think this has actually worked out well because we have this tape for people inside and then hopefully we get outside for the next one. <laughs> yeah, I would love that. That would be fun. And then maybe I can bring a little bit of equipment and we play around with some stuff. Okay.